Hey everyone, Technically Jeff here, and today I'm testing out the new Carlinkit 2 Air, aka the Carlinkit 5.0. This converts both wired CarPlay and Android Auto to wireless, and it's pretty inexpensive after my promo code TechJeff20 on AutoKitCarPlay.com, the same place I got the T-Box Plus from that I highly recommend as well, that's also a great price. I'm gonna test this out in my Kia EV6, which only has wired connectivity, and I'll test it with both an Android phone and an iPhone so we can see how it does with both. So, let's do it. We'll start with the unboxing here. It comes in nice small packaging here, and it has various details about the device for those of you that want to see that information. Then taking it out here, it's nice and very compact. You can see a lot of openings on the side for cooling and the USB-C port to connect it to the vehicle. And yeah, it looks good. I like how small it is. And with the openings on the sides for the cooling, you can easily mount it on any flat surface in your vehicle using some double-sided tape. Then we have a couple of USB cables here. There's a USB-C to USB-C. and a USB-A to USB-C, which is the one that I'll use in my car. Then we have the manual here with information on setting it up, connecting it, accessing the backend settings, that sort of thing. And that's it. So let's take these out to the car and test it out. All right, so first we'll connect the cable to the device. It's a nice and very tight fit with a USB-C connector. That's good. You definitely don't want it to have any kind of wiggle to it. That was a problem I had with the previous AA wireless device. Then I'll plug it into my car. And on my phone, I'll connect it to its Bluetooth. Now I'm recording using the same phone that I'm testing with here. So it does stop recording when I connect it to Android Auto. So when I caught that, I did disconnect it and reconnect it to the vehicle and then start recording again as it connected. I don't want you guys thinking it took three minutes to connect. <laughs> but once you connect to the Bluetooth, it just loads right up. And I'll test out some functions here. There does appear to be a slight lag now that could be an initial lag since it's just starting for the first time and initializing. I'll have to see, but overall it looks good. And it seems to work like it should. Music quality is very good. And yeah, it seems pretty solid. Now let's test it with an iPhone. So I have my old iPhone here. I'll go into the Bluetooth settings and connect it to the AutoKit Bluetooth. And I'll select to use CarPlay.
and it just loads right up. Quality looks good here too. It's very responsive. I know some CarPlay adapters have a lag, but this doesn't have any kind of a lag at all. I don't have music on the iPhone to listen to, but overall it's very responsive and it looks good. It's nice to have a device that can convert both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay from wired to wireless, since a lot of people use both in their households. And one of the benefits of the new CarLink at 5.0 over the previous versions is that it actually uses the proper protocol for both. So previous generations and many other adapters out there used wired CarPlay to provide wireless Android Auto. And while that works, it can cause issues like lagging, disconnects, that sort of thing. This new CarLink at 5.0 converts wired CarPlay to wireless CarPlay and wired Android Auto to wireless Android Auto. So it should be a better overall experience, especially for Android users. Now to access the backend settings, you open the web browser and go to 192.168.50.2. One thing to note, if you're on an Android device, you need to connect directly to the Wi-Fi using password 12345678. Android phones won't let you use the Wi-Fi connection that's being used by Android Auto, so you can't just open your browser on an Android phone and go to it like you do on the iPhone here that I'm showing you. But yeah, this shows you details about the device. You can see the phones that have connected to it in the past. And there are various settings here that you can change. It would be nice if there were descriptions here of what everything means, but that's what Google's for. <laughs> Basically, you can make it work with CarPlay or Android Auto if you want. Sync mode is for compatibility with older cars. Background fixes if it just shows a black screen. Auto connect, that's self-explanatory. Category is for audio quality, so DVD is the best there, so I'm leaving that. And there are a few other things you can change here too. Setting the FPS to 20, for example, can help if there's a lag. But yeah, it's nice to have access to those settings. And I did want to show you guys too, I tested out Android Auto again without making any backend changes, and this time it loaded up and didn't have any real lag. It's still not super snappy, but that's Android Auto for you. But uh, overall, it works well. <laughs> Again, music sounds fine. The multi-touch functionality works as it should. You can switch between apps quickly. You can scroll quickly. So it seems fine. The initial lag was likely just the fact that the device was initializing for the first time. But overall, I think this is definitely a solid option. And like I said, it's very inexpensive. I'll post a link in the description, but if you go to autokitcarplay.com, it's only $105.99. And if you use promo code techjeff20, it brings it to under $85 and shipping's free. So if you're wanting a wireless CarPlay and Android Auto adapter, this is a really solid option for a low price. Now, if you want those features along with the ability to watch movies on your car's display, install various apps, that sort of thing, I definitely recommend the T-Box Plus that I reviewed previously. It works well and provides a lot more functionality. I'll link that in the description too, along with the review I did. It's about $180 after my promo code, so it's more expensive, but you do get a lot more. So it's up to you, depending on what your needs are and what you're wanting, but you can't really go wrong with either one. So anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions on this. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. I have a lot on the way. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.